welcome students to the online NPTEL course contemporary architecture and design uh, in the previous class we started uh, discussing uh, one of the uh, first uh, one of the movement of the uh, first phase of uh, uh, contemporary uh, modernist movement which is Bauhaus uh, today we will uh, discuss another uh, parallel movement of Bauhaus which is uh, uh, which is not in the architecture but mostly uh, predominant in the uh, fine arts and uh, uh, furniture design and uh, 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 industrial design movement. Also, there are some examples of architecture as well, which is uh, uh, the movement is De Stigel, which is uh, which has some other names like uh, avant-garde and uh, uh, neoplasticism. So we will discuss the De Stigel movement and how it got influenced uh, uh, with Bauhaus and uh, how uh, Bauhaus and De Stigel uh, were um, similar and what are the uh, dissimilarities uh, between them as well. So this uh, Bauhaus movement uh, started uh, in Europe, uh, this digital movement also started in Europe and uh, we will discuss uh, their uh, similarity. So uh, before that let us just uh, understand how uh, uh, where this uh, is positioned in the uh, Bauhaus um, in the in the modernist movement so in the modernist movement we know uh, this asymmetry of the building is there and then asymmetry of uh, building was is one of the uh, key uh, characteristics feature and then puri uh, purity in uh, form and uh, pattern was one of the um, style and then the uh, purity of material and uh, um, uh, those things were there and the new material was used in modernist movement. So uh, some of the modernist movement and this is actually a De Stigel movements um, uh, uh, industrial design and painting which got some similarity with the modernist movement we will discuss what are the similarities and uh, through the color palette and the visual composition and the inspiration of the form and abstraction as well. So in the, the uh, Bauhaus we have seen Bauhaus uh, has a, a juxtaposition of cuboid new material and asymmetry was the key fact, uh, characteristics of Bauhaus which again uh, uh, influenced internationalist movement and the later phases of modernism. Uh, so uh, in the in the um, visual style. Now if we look at um, uh, in the parallel movements of uh, other uh, furniture design and product design we see the similarities as well. So minimalist approach uh, of design and pure uh, duty of design was there in the uh, uh, in everywhere. So in the um, time frame Bauhaus is positioned here which is uh, part of the um, early phase of modernism which is uh, from the functionalism and there uh, if we look at the style Bauhaus is this which has some similarities with the previous uh, style of for the machine movement as we are discussing in the previous class in the uh, way of uh, truth to the construction process here also we see the true uh, construction process and pure form which is uh, for the machine movement but opposing the against the machine movements um, curvilinearity and exaggeration of form and then again there is similarity in the international style and uh, the later uh, phases of uh, phase 2 as well and uh, now if we uh, this is the time um, time frame uh, this is the sim uh, some buildings in the time frame of modernism and now if we look at uh, some paintings and industrial design of the modernism so this is uh, a machine design a uh, machine made design and this is the uh, uh, biomorphic uh, uh, Arch Nouveau design and this we see uh, parallel to Bauhaus is the Stigel movement and uh, what are the similarities uh, we will discuss. Again uh, we see the similarity in the uh, automobile design as well. So uh, how these are similar and then uh, in the cubist there was a similarity with the cubist and the Stigel. If you look at this is a cubist painting of uh, Guernica uh, by Pablo Picasso. Here also you will see uh, black white which is there and then divided into different cubes and different uh, uh, geometric form. So this is a human figure, uh, human figure and uh, ox and um, horses. They are divided into geometric uh, abstraction, which is also has some similarity with the um, the stigil movement as well. Now uh, here well, with the Bauhaus, we have the stigil, which is more, uh, uh, which started uh, mostly from the fine arts, has a connection with the Bauhaus. Now uh, the stigil is a Dutch uh, word um, which means uh, the style, the stigil and uh, the background was predominantly it is an art movement and uh, a Dutch artist uh, um, uh, was um, uh, founded the movement which is almost similar to 1920s which is uh, the time frame when uh, we start the modernist uh, uh, era which is almost parallel to that just three years before that in uh, Amsterdam and uh, Bauhaus uh, school was um, uh, founded in 1925. So more or less they, they are overlapping um, 
uh, design uh, movements. So, a uh, main time frame was 1970s uh, uh, to 1931, uh, the main center was Netherlands, uh, which is also in Europe and uh, uh, Bauhaus center was uh, Germany. The new style of aesthetics, which is the new style uh, of the, the, the stage, they uh, 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 called them. And then Theo van Duisburg was one of the key um, uh, protagonist of this uh, uh, style and he was uh, mostly a painter but he also designed uh, some um, uh, conceptual architectural building and few um, interior design he have done and uh, other uh, painters are, uh, like Jerry Treadwells are also there. So, uh, this Tijil um, uh, got its influ uh, significance influence in the minimalism movement, uh, the minimalist uh, style and the cubist movement which uh, we were uh, seeing that uh, the way cubist um, painters break their um, vi um, visual abstraction uh, from uh, figurative to um, uh, make the abstraction uh, through cubist rectilinear form which is also has some similarity with the uh, the stigil style and this style is also called neoplastic style the uh, new way of abstraction of pure design and it looks like a plastic um, art because the uh, usage of color of um, three primary uh, color uh, red blue and yellow and uh, the pure red pure blue and pure yellow and with the lines and um, uh, with the black line and white background so that looks like an assembly of different plastics um, in the uh, picture frame so now look at the window design of um, Theo van Duisburg so this is a window frame designed by Theo van Duisburg. If you look at the window, this is a juxtaposition of three primary color, yellow, red and blue, which is the color palette of uh, the stigil as well as in the Bauhaus. And then we see the um, uh, rectilinear form and pure square within a square is used. Again, we uh, see the similar color, but the red got a little uh, um, lip placed and then he used a matte finish of red, which is a um, uh, brown now and this is um, but still it has the similar color tone and somewhere we will see the green usage of green which is also there in the um, Kandineski's painting and uh, Frank Lloyd Wright's painting as well. So red, uh, blue and uh, green will be the main protagonist then white and black uh, and sometimes grey and sometimes uh, usage of uh, green uh, this particular uh, tone of green is also there. Now if we look at uh, organic um, design or prairie design which we will study later. So, there will be a similarity in the organic um, way of um, uh, window design which is designed by this uh, particular example is designed by Frank Lloyd Wright uh, in his famous uh, Roby house. Here we will see the organic way of ornamentation is also quite similar and then Frank Lloyd Wright's painting is also uh, we uh, discussed in the previous class and we have shown that. So, here um, there is a similarity in the Frank Lloyd Wright's painting as well. So, uh, there will be usage of triangle, uh, some uh, pure geometry and yellow, uh, red uh, will be there. So, we will see this uh, later when we discuss um, organic movement as well. But now, if we uh, think uh, that just before uh, what was the window frame style, we have also discussed the Tiffany window which uh, was part of uh, Art Nouveau style and there was a lot of ex um, exaggerated ornamentations and figurative depiction of uh, ornamentation, those there was a little bit of abstraction and a lot of curvilinear uh, lines were there and this was a very ornate uh, window was there in, um, uh, in Tiffany windows which is um, designed by Tiffany and uh, was an um, American uh, designer and um, it was part of the um, Art Nouveau movement. Now in Duisburg's uh, painting, if we look at the abstraction, so um, elevation and uh, plan was uh, uh, together, so that kind of um, abstraction was there, which we will see in the uh, cubist movement there. So there will be a juxtaposition of plan elevation, so time, um, the uh, space will be distorted into a uh, different way. So, this, uh, plan, uh, this, this is a plan of the table which uh, what they are playing is depicted over here, uh, the cards are there. So, this kind of um, breaking the uh, element, breaking the um, uh, breaking the product into different uh, dimension is also there in cubist movement. And if you look at the way uh, the figures were uh, broken in pure geometry, um, uh, so this is the style of uh, the design uh, movement. Now, if, if you look at the predominant color over here, this is uh, black, white and then uh, you have yellow, uh, blue, red and then a little bit of green which is added over there. Here in the uh, painting also I will see the uh, the colors which is coming out is red, uh, yellow and 
blue and then green is also there the red is uh, used in a different tint so that is a bluish tint over there but this also emerges and, um, as a depiction of red this is not exactly a red this is a purple but still because there's a, a bluish tint all over there so red plus a blue uh, which is purple got um, um, a purple uh, was used but still the um, predominant feature are this, uh, this three uh, color which is in the uh, uh, in three uh, direction of color wheel this is red uh, blue and yellow and then if you mix blue and yellow you will get green uh, red uh, red and yellow orange and then uh, blue and red uh, purple or violet you will get and uh, so uh, here you will see a more or less a uh, color selection of in these three um, uh, direction which is a triadic color selection uh, uh, process so that got used here yeah uh, so in this um, Paint, uh, in in these uh, paintings also we will see the similar color tone here we see uh, the this uh, composition is only black uh, white and gray and here in the other paintings which are uh, like yellow uh, blue and red this is used and uh, if we look at some other painters um, expression of um, uh, this digital movement uh, Piet Mondrian's uh, painting has very similarity in the composition of uh, Theo van Duisburg's painting so we'll uh, see Piet Mondrian some of the work and uh, we'll see the similar color tone and the juxtaposition of similar colors and these uh, things again we will uh, see is, uh, this is in 90 degree angle but just tilted in the 45 degree uh, rotation but the same color palette uh, maintained in throughout, uh, throughout the uh, this digital movement. Now Theo van uh, Duisburg's other uh, movements where here uh, there was expression of uh, the fig figurative um, uh, uh, tree is broken in geometry um, but here there is no again uh, the um, art for pure arts uh, sake which was there in the Bauhaus movement uh, Kandinsky's work um, it does not convey any meaning uh, that is also there but there is some expression um, um, of tree and uh, metaphorical uh, representation of a uh, tree is also there. So uh, here uh, there is an example of Theo van Duisburg's interior design. So this is a conceptual design of Theo uh, van Duisburg's. Now through this we can understand why uh, architectural uh, movement which is Bauhaus and a destigial movement which emerge from a visual uh, art is slightly different. Their color tone is same, uh, their way of um, articulation is same but still uh, a movement which emerged from fine arts is um, uh, philosophically a little different from Bauhaus. Bauhaus we see the functionality is the first priority and there, there won't be any ornamentation of um, interior and if you look uh, um, uh, remember the uh, Bauhaus uh, um, uh, art and craft uh, de design schools interior there will be just white and red patch in uh, a particular frame but there won't be any ornamentation is very minimalist. Now if we look at the interior design which is done uh, which, which is a conceptual design done by Theo van Duisburg there is a lot of ornamentation uh, here in the interior which Bauhaus will not do but now if we look at the ornamentation the way of ornamentation comes from Bauhaus paintings so it is again rectilinear lines are there and uh, within one line and uh, these um, um, uh, rectangles and uh, cubes this one primary color is uh, imposed over here but if you look at this lot of broken elements a lot of elements are there within the um, interior design so uh, a lot of different colors and color patches were there within the interior but which uh, Bauhaus will not do Bauhaus will uh, be more functional and minimalist whatever is required and the, um, uh, the bare minimum uh, design elements will be added so there is a slight difference between um, Bauhaus and this digital and this digital as it's called in neoplastic design so a lot of plastic elements it's like a lot of different plastic colored um, uh, colored plastic elements are juxtaposed to each other and that creates a aesthetics so uh, this digital movement has an aesthetic um, has an urge to um, showcase their aesthetic um, uh, value into an aesthetic ornamentation into that but the aesthetics ornamentation style was um, pure geometry and uh, rectilinear and uh, pure form and pure color but there was aesthetic uh, treatments on top of um, 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 uh, it's not just uh, function there is an aesthetic um, value uh, aesthetic um, enhancement added to the facade which Bauhaus does not do.
now he, the, uh, this is um, his design uh, which is uh, uh, which he redesigned for a dance hall of um, uh, um, a dance hall of uh, france which is done by um, uh, the dutch painter uh, uh, doisberg which is one of the few design which uh, he have uh, done in um, interior design so here also you will see the elements are there which is um, added elements on top of the ceiling so these are ornamentations which is uh, which does not have any functional value but just to or, um, uh, decorate the um, wall it was added again you will see the same color palette but still this this does not uh, so, um, um, have some functional um, uh, value in it this is just for pure form and pure art and uh, pure aesthetics these are elements so this is uh, th these elements are added so this um, again uh, talks about the uh, little difference between the stigil movement and bauhaus and if you look at the other um, uh, these panels on, um, uh, of uh, which is used in the uh, interior was again w white and black the same color tone is used and the steel color is used which is uh, the purity of material there is similarity but still there is uh, uh, this conceptual dissimilarity between Bauhaus and the stigil uh, movement now if you look at the stigil uh, furniture you will understand it much better way so if you look at this furniture these furnitures are not minimal these furnitures are assembly of cuboid but there are a lot of elements are there if you look at um, if you uh, remember the uh, uh, wisely uh, uh, wisely chair which is uh, named after um, uh, Kandinsky that chair was uh, minimalist but this chair is uh, these furnitures are not minimalist there uh, they does not uh, talk about the functional uh, functionality first because if you look at this chair these are not uh, so ergonomic this is aesthetics is more important than ergonomics but aesthetic is uh, coming from pure geometry but still if you look at the functionality of this uh, chair um, the handrest of this side is there but uh, here the handrest is in different um, uh, side so this is more of a that is why the neoplastic um, uh, system is there so the different uh, elements of uh, are just juxtaposed but this is not talking about the ergonomic uh, usage first and then form this is form is very important over here and uh, or sometimes might overpower the function even here if you see um, this is not minimalist and a lot of elements are added over here even in this chair this uh, chair might not be uh, so ergonomic but thus uh, but just uh, the assembly of um, uh, uh, nice aesthetic assembly uh, composition of different elements because it comes from a fine arts uh, style and uh, this uh, here it's not uh, form follows function here um, so these are some of the uh, de uh, designs done by Jerry Tredvelt, who is a Dutch furniture designer and architect. Now, um, if we look at Bauhaus, this is the, what the similarity is: the color, shape, and form is translated from Bauhaus, but the functionality approach is um, uh, overpowered uh, by the aesthetic element which came from the um, Bauhaus so Bauhaus aesthetics has been translated into the the stigil movement but not the philosophy of uh, function first and then form now if we look at some other examples of uh, J. Tridwell's chair so uh, similar uh, things are there so it, this is an expression of a form uh, rather than a functional approach of how a chair should be designed but this form is aesthetically uh, designed and then um, the aesthetic value is much more than uh, the functional um, um, emphasis so here also you will see the um, uh, element is used as it is uh, so uh, t um, uh, the textures of wood wooden textures are uh, visible and also if uh, you will see the members are juxtaposed and uh, uh, the uh, this is an assembly of different cuboids uh, all together and that creates the form of a chair now Jerry Treadwell's uh, some um, building design if we look at the same concept of uh, juxtaposing different uh, elements and different colors uh, um, colors which comes from the um, primary color palette are there so this building which is a uh, Riedveld uh, Schroeder's building for uh, which is designed by uh, Mrs. Schroeder's and which is in Netherlands again uh, so the, the, uh, again if you look at the composition of building this is a juxtaposition of different cuboids and different lines and here uh, this um, um, railing of this uh, para, uh, the, the, the um, balcony again works as a Mondrian's or um, Theo van Doisberg's painting of black lines then white um, background and some red line and yellow line 
and some uh, right. Uh, so this this emerged from a painting, the concept of a uh, neoplastic uh, plasticism, and then the superimposition of different elements, different color elements, lines. So this acts as a black line and white background and the yellow line, and uh, these are uh, coming up and then uh, creates a solid and void of this uh, uh, building. And here this black patches with the void acts as a black background. And the other side of the building, this is the front facade and this, uh, this is the side facade and this is another uh, uh, front facade of the building. Again you will see this black lines and white uh, uh, punctures and these kind of elements will be there and again you will uh, see the uh, play of solid and void but still the uh, similarity will be uh, like it is uh, steel and glass and the pure uh, geometric rectilinear form which is uh, quite similar to the uh, Bauhaus movement is also there. But here also you will see the uh, same color yellow, blue and red. Now this is some other uh, um, uh, um, size view of the building. Again, uh, the usage of new technology is uh, overly used, which is uh, quite similar to the Bauhaus and uh, for the machine movement. And again, you will see this part is uh, punctured and there is no column, and this this part is acts as a void, which uh, can be translated into painting as a black patch and then white and then re some red lines over there. So it emerged from the uh, painting of Mondrian and uh, Theo van Doesburg's uh, style. Now within that, so um, now you can clearly understand this is this is Jerry Dredwell's share is also uh, within this um, um, uh, uh, building. This um, design is definitely not uh, minimalist. So there is a lot of element, lot of straight lines are added. So these elements are just uh, visual elements, uh, they have no function but uh, just uh, to decorate the building it is there. Though there is some, um, uh, so um, though there is a visual uh, similarity but the conceptually it is more exaggerated, it is not uh, Bauhaus. So there is a difference, uh, uh, actually a lot of difference into, um, in aesthetic value. Um, uh, expression of Bauhaus and um, the strigil movement. Even each and every elements has the same color palette, but a lot of elements are coming in the uh, um, uh, within the interior. But uh, all these elements are rectilinear, pure geometric, and only on these three colors three primary color. Now if you look at Piet Mondrian's painting which is also uh, pretty similar to the uh, Theo van Doesburg's painting as well as the Jerry Dredwell's uh, design, furniture design and architecture and painting. Uh, so this is uh, Piet Mondrian's painting and this is one of the famous Piet Mondrian's painting of Broadway Boogie Boogie. So this looks like a uh, top view or the plan of a Broadway and then small cars within the, within the Broadway and uh, uh, city of uh, uh, some some cities, um, rectilinear cities plan, and then uh, this is again uh, the same colors, uh, same um, um, uh, square, um, uh, rectilinear uh, linear uh, patterns and uh, cu uh, cubes and um, 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 rectangles and squares are um, uh, creating this pattern. Here it is again uh, the. A juxtaposition of um, was the same color which has been followed in uh, the Stigel and Bau, uh, Bauhaus movement. Now also in the uh, uh, painting we, uh, there is some um, meaningful expression in uh, um, uh, the Stigel movement which was not there in Bauhaus uh, in Kandinsky's work which is uh, mostly like uh, just an express, uh, expression of pure art without any meaning. So it is a tree but here you will see um, uh, the same um, color tone which is uh, uh, this is monochrome black white and gray and uh, here it is again divided in some basic uh, uh, geometry um, and but here you can see the cubism cubism style which is uh, broken into uh, some um, uh, abstract form. This is definitely the estrogen movement but cubist movement got attached with this and some inspiration was there with the cubism movement as well. And here also you will see the same lines are coming and this does not uh, depict any meaning in this uh, painting but yellow and blue tints are there in this uh, painting. Now uh, Valmos Husser's painting uh, if you uh, look at has the same color tone, same color palette, the same way of breaking uh, human faces into geometry um, and again the human faces eye and nose and uh, these uh, things will be break, uh, broken in again geometry. And if you uh, uh, look at this um, uh, the way it has been uh, broken in geometry with the same three colors, uh, primary colors plus green and then black and white, you can uh, it will remind you of the Bauhaus uh, face which is um, uh, 
which was a logo of Bauhaus. So here you will understand the uh, similarity of Bauhaus and their stigil. They, ha they, they, uh, they has the similar thought, uh, thought process of making, um, uh, de um, uh, depicting a figurative de um, form, uh, which is a, a, a normal bi um, a biological form in, and uh, into a pure basic geometry. Now, um, another example of um, the same painters and graphic designs are cigarette packet and uh, uh, these are also same and again this is what uh, I was talking about the same way uh, which has been um, broken the human faces into, into the prior geometry. In the next class we will start, uh, start with the other uh, modernist movement uh, which was uh, emerged from the um, contemporary style and we will start with the, the Chicago movement which is also a functionalist movement and uh, in the parallel um, time frame but emerged in um, America. Thank you.